The presidential premiership in Malaysia has finally ended. This means the prime minister is no longer able to lord over everyone in the political system. The 2018 election ended the UMNO one-party state which ruled Malaysia from 1955, two years before the nation even achieved its independence. A key component of the one-party state was the massive powers endowed in the office of the prime minister, who was also the president of the dominant party. In the 1990s, opposition politicians liked to say that while the UK changes prime minister every five years and the queen rules for life, Malaysia changes its king every five years but Dr. Mahathir Mohamad rules for life. Not really, but that is why it was a joke. The position of the prime minister used to convey a sense of perpetuity. A long-standing practice in Malaysia is to distribute millions of copies of the portraits of the king and queen as well as the prime minister. They would be put up in government offices, hotels, and even coffee shops. Ismail Sabri Yaakob, who on Saturday was sworn in as Malaysia's ninth prime minister and the third in three years, would be wise to focus on other tasks that are more urgent and not be too concerned with the distribution of his portraits. His premiership may be short-lived. As Muhyiddin announced his cabinet lineup last year, his governing coalition was already set to collapse, although it took a long 17 months to happen. UMNO immediately announced that the party was not part of the Parakate Nasional coalition despite its leaders being members of the Muhyiddin cabinet. Up until the very end of the Muhyiddin government, he was still trying to resurrect the presidential premier of the past, shutting down parliament through emergency rule, arguing with the palace, and selectively persecuting political opponents, while dishing out contracts and positions in the hope of buying enough support. The new prime minister has only 114 out of 220 MPs on his side. He will be subjected to similar internal challenges that ex-premier Muhyiddin faced. Ismail Sabri should begin his tenure by acknowledging the spirit espoused by the king's statement on August 18 that there should no longer be a winner-takes-all political culture. He must find political compromises within the governing coalition, as well as with the opposition. For Malaysia to move forward, recognizing that the premiership is not about having absolute powers would help build better institutions and political processes. As Malaysia's presidential premiership ended, new power relations must be developed among parties in the ruling coalition with all the stakeholders, namely the parliamentary opposition, the palace, and the state governments.